Hey, my little cupcakes, I have a great story for you. Baba Wah and William. Here we go on our adventure. Hope you like it. This is William. He is a sheep. You will note that William is reading. There are not many sheep who read, but William is one of them. This is Baba Wah. She is also a sheep. In this picture, Baba Wah is knitting. Knitting is a very practical hobby for a sheep. I'm surprising that more of them do it. Oh, well. William and Baba Wah. One's reading and one's knitting. Baba Wah and William are best of friends. They spend most days reading and knitting. Knitting and reading. Sounds kind of boring, but they like it. There they are. Knitting and reading. Enjoying the day. One day William looked up from his book, An Adventure Story, Pirates. Treasure chest, that sort of thing. I've been thinking, said to Baba Wah. Thinking is good, Baba Wah answered, or so I've heard. We should have an adventure of our own, said William. Agreed, said Baba Wah. There are only so many sweaters once you get knit. And so the two friends set off for their adventure. They were knitting and reading, and they decided they needed to go outside and have an adventure. The day was perfect for such a thing. The flowers were blooming. The sun was shining. The birds were singing. This last bit about the birds was especially good because adventure usually involves some kind of trouble. And it's nice to have a little bird song to help you through it. There was, however, a small problem. So they're out on their adventure. The sun was shining. The birds were singing. Flowers were blooming. There was a little problem coming. But Baba Wai William lived in a field, and the field was surrounded by a stone wall. Which way? asked William. You decide, Baba Wai answered. Left then, said William. Baba Wai thought they should have gone right. So they couldn't decide which direction they needed to go. Baba Wai thought they should have gone right. He said, let's go left. The two sheep walked around the field once, twice, three times. Is this what adventures are like? Baba Wai asked. All this walking, I mean? I don't know, said William, but I do know it's making me hungry. Me too, Baba Wah replied. Grass, anyone? So they kept, they walked around in a circle three times and they were hungry. And they decided to have a little grass for a snack. The two friends were just finishing their lunch when quite unexpectedly they were approached by a third sheep, a sheep with a long, rangy tail a sheep with a sharp whiskered snout, a sheep with a filthy wool coat. Oh my goodness, this doesn't sound like a sheep at all. Here they are, see that third sheep approaching them? The long rangy tail. Hey there, mutton chops, said the, said the uh, sheep was shaken. When he grinned, Baba Wah's heart broke. His mother had never taught him how to brush his teeth. We've been looking for an adventure, William said. Look no longer, the new sheep sh said. You found one. And he snapped his horrid teeth most unexpectedly. So here's the wolf saying, look no further, you found an adventure. Well, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing, I think. Run, said William. It's that wolf in sheep's clothing I've read about. Is this an adventure, said Baba Wah? If this is an adventure, said Baba Wah, I'm not a fan. Oddly, the bird song did not seem to help much as they were running from the wolf. Look at them running as fast as they could run. That wolf chasing them. Suddenly, the wolf stopped the shenanigans. Let's quit this nonsense for a minute, he said to William. I, I'm interested in that thing you said earlier. What thing, asked William. The thing about me, said the wolf. William thought for a, a moment, not sure, he said. But Bob Wah's memory was better than William's. He said he's read about you, she's she said to the wolf, the wolf's eyes, the wolf's eyes, which up to now had been kind of shifty looking, grew round and large. Is it true, he asked William, have you? Have you actually read about me? So here's the wolf, he stopped running after him and said, have you actually read about me? Is that true? He wanted to know. See for yourself, said William. He reached into his backpack and pulled out a book. The wolf took a step backward. He looked at the blue sky. He looked down at the green grass. He looked at the big stone wall. 
He did not look at the book. He didn't even look at the book. He was looking all around when William showed him the book. He was just looking all around, but not looking at the book. Oh dear, said William, I see the problem. What problem, said the wolf? There's no problem. The wolf held, you can't read, can you? Said William. The wolf held a mournful lupine howl. Oh! He dropped his shaggy lupine head. Bob Watt's heart broke for a second time as a salty lupine tear fell on the soft ground. It's not my fault, the wolf cried. I'm just not the reading kind. William can teach you, you know, said Bob Watt. The wolf lifted his head and looked at William. Would you ask the wolf, would you do that for me? William didn't seem so sure. Of course he would, said Bob Watt. In the meantime, I'll knit you a new coat. This one is a disgrace. So the wolf wanted to learn how to read, and William could show him, and Baba was going to knit him a new coat. And so William went off, went about the business of teaching the wolf to read. It wasn't easy. The wolf often jumped up in the middle of the lesson and chased the two sheep around the field. This irritated William to no end. Don't let it get you, said William. Don't let it get you, William, said Baba Watt. He is just following his nature. Besides, all that reading and knitting has taken its toll. We can use the exercise. So right in the middle of the lesson, the wolf would start chasing them all around the field. And William got upset, but Baba Watt said, we can use the exercise. Just keep running. Eventually, after a lot of hard work and several extra help sessions, the wolf did learn to read. And when he saw what the book had said about him, he was outraged. This is so unfair, he complained. It says here I'm cruel and sneaky. And your point, said William. It's not true, the wolf insisted. I'm just rambunctious. That's one word for it, said Babawa. And so one over and so over time, an unlikely friendship formed between the wolf and the two sheep. And that involved a fair amount of chasing. So they got to become friends. And they still chased them, but they liked each other. But there were great times, too. One afternoon, when the wolf was on the second volume of a new series he liked, and the two sheep had shed quite a few pounds, William turned to Babawa. This has been quite an adventure after all. Babawa put down her knitting, a set of snazzy leg warmers for the wolf. Knitting a set of snazzy leg warmers for the wolf. I agree, she replied, much better than pirates. The wolf looked up from his book. So they're laying on the ground, looking up at the sky. And she said, this has been quite, they said, this has been quite an adventure. Can you two chatter cheeks keep the noise down? He, the wolf said, I'm reading over here. So he called William and Bob Watt chatter cheeks and said, can you keep it down? I'm finally reading over here. Hope you liked it. The end.